And I actually want you to explain to me, if you will, the carbohydrate insulin model. Is that, uh, I don't really know too much about it. Um, was it Gary? Mm-hmm. To, is it Taubes? To, 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 Taubes. Taubes. Okay. Yes. Um, because I did read some of his studies and I, I was not really clear on carbohydrate insulin model and what that means and how mm-hmm. that affects training adaptations. Yes. So in a nutshell, the carbohydrate insulin model is it's applied to obesity. So it goes like this. Insulin is the, in quotes, fat storage hormone. Carbohydrates are the nutrient that elicit the greatest insulin response. Therefore, carbohydrates are the most fattening macronutrient. And therefore, if we want to solve the obesity problem, we got to cut carbs out. So that is the nutshell version <laughs> of the carb insulin hypothesis of obesity. The reason why that is very false, yeah, well. <laughs> that's unfortunately... <laughs> For the people who try to um, champion it, it's false. We can take a a really kind of uh, elementary look at populations. And whenever you look at population data, there's all kinds of noise. There's all kinds of confounding factors and all kinds of things that it's it's not a tightly controlled thing. But let's just look at the populations on the planet who are the leanest and who have been the leanest since the beginning of human history. Are they carbing? Are they low carbing it? Are they ketoing it? Well, not even close. In fact, the majority of their diet is carbohydrates. Okay, so that's population data. Let's put that aside for a second. Why don't we run a bunch of experiments and see whether carbs are fattening or not? Let's do it in the short term. What are carbs in this instance? Like, are we talking about potatoes? Are we talking about pasta? And are we any carb-rich about- food, anything that contains polyhydroxyaldehydes and polyhydroxyketones. Uh, All the glyphosate, (laughs) all of it, (laughs) sunflower oil, okay. (laughs) All the seed oils. All of the, yeah. So carbohydrates, we're we're talking about any food that's not fat or protein rich will qualify as carbohydrate foods. And I've even seen Gary, Gary Taubes be mad at fruit. So, (laughs) So we can find out on a controlled experimental basis, whether carbs are in quotes fattening. And we can do that in the short term by taking two groups of people who are eating at maintenance, Mm -hmm. and then we'll feed them 50% above their maintenance intake. So we'll feed them a thousand calories above and beyond maintenance. We'll feed one group fat, a thousand calories of fat above and beyond maintenance. And we'll feed the other group carbohydrate, um, a thousand calories above and beyond maintenance. We control the experiment really tightly and you know, with these overfeeding studies, you can't ethically run them for very long. So they're typically a few days to a few weeks at most. Mm-hmm. So when they've done these overfeeding experiments, um, comparing large amounts of overfed carbs versus overfed fats, it's usually within the course of a day. Mm-hmm. So body fat deposition is always greater in the fat overfeed compared to the carb overfeed. That shouldn't be too surprising given that there are just less chemical steps for the body to be able to store dietary fat into the adipose tissue. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's just kind of how it is. Mm. And so that's not too surprising. Now, um, a a more definitive experiment, and by the way, those have been done, and we either see no significant difference in fat gain from the carb overfeed versus the fat overfeed, or we'll see greater fat gain in the fat overfeed. Okay. So we'll, we'll... Take that data and put it aside for a second. What we can do to find out, to get more definitive answers on this carb-insulin hypothesis is we compare different diets that are the same in total calories, the same in protein, but highly disparate in their proportion of carbohydrate and fat. Mm -hmm. Like we can compare a low-carb ketogenic diet that has a maximum of 50 grams of fat in it. And then the, uh, I'm sorry, 50 grams of carbs in it and the rest of the calories from fat. And then same amount of protein and and the other group, except we do a high carb, low fat. And we run the experiment. We put the subjects on, you know, let's say 20% 20 caloric deficit, something along the lines of 20, let's say even aggressive caloric deficits, 20 to 40%. And then we see who loses more body fat. Mm -hmm. In the studies that are rigorously controlled for equating protein and calories, it doesn't matter whether one diet is ketogenic 
or whether one diet is high carb, low fat, they lose the same amount of body fat by the end of the experiment. There is a body of research that people who are low carb absolutists rely on to champion the low carb keto model. And they always point to these studies that look, keto beat the, the high carb, low fat diet over here. There's, uh. like, it's just like a, there's a couple dozen, there's a dozens of studies that show this. Okay, let's look at the protein. Mm. Did they match protein? Oh no, the, the keto group is about double the protein as the uh, high carb, low fat group. Okay, well, we have a problem there because anytime that you're consuming more protein, you're getting a greater satiating effect. You're getting a slightly greater thermic effect and then you're better preserving lean body mass throughout the course of the experiment. And so the research has been done. Yes. <laughs> over many studies, dozens of studies that have equated protein and calories and saw no special fat loss advantage of the lower carb group compared to the higher carb group. So what does that tell us? It tells us that some people do really well on keto because it is just mind-numbingly simple. Mm -hmm. Cut the carbs out. Yeah, a process of elimination, right? It's just to eat protein and fat. Okay, it's super simple. What happens by default is you end up cutting out um, hyperpalatable, um, highly processed yeah. foods that are just easily overconsumed. These dessert type, snack type foods that are highly engineered. You know, these these fat carb combo packaged foods that are wrapped up and can last forever. Mm. Um, cheap and highly accessible. Those foods are out. Mm -hmm. You know, your apple pie is out. Pasta with with bread and then ice cream afterwards. That's out. Yeah. <laughs> the the question is, how long can people sustain keto? How long can people sustain a maximum of 50 grams of carbs a day? And it turns out that the general population over time, when you, you put them on these keto experiments, the keto group, over the course of six months to a year, they will double to triple their carbohydrate intake over time. So they have a hard time sticking to that level of carb restriction. Now, there's a small segment of the population who can go full-blown keto, even much lower than 50 grams of carbs a day, and they'll be very vocal about it. And they're doing great. <laughs> and to them, I say, good, great, mm. do you. It's just that we have to realize that you're not in the majority. And not only that, but as long as people realize it's a game of individualizing the program for people to be able to stick to it, and as long as your total caloric amount and your protein targets are good, you are going to hit your body composition goal. Mm. So there, adherence yeah. plays into this now with it's all both exercise adherence. and diet as well. It's not mm -hmm. about this, what diet do you subscribe to? It's about what is the diet that is best suited for you over the long term, one that you're going to maintain over a long period of time. Yeah, but see, you know, there's no hook to that. There's no, no, there's it's no not sexy. catchy, no, catchy little thing that you can like, sell a book on. It's yeah. like, you know, being able to say, if you like keto, great, yeah. do it. If you, that's what you can stick to. That's, that's your diet. Oh, you don't like keto? You like low carb non-keto? Hey, that, that's cool. You're more zone-ish type yep. of thing. Okay. That's you. Oh, oh, you're, you're the guy who likes high carb, low fat. You prefer that and you can stick to it and you can maintain your caloric deficit on that and reach your weight loss goals. Mm. Then that's what you do. There's nothing exciting about that. No, because there's no controversy there. You have to sell this idea that seems somewhat the idea I can't really achieve it, but if I try hard, I'll, I will, I can. And that's what, you know, it's, it creates this competition. It's yeah. the same um, as brain health. You know, there is this pyramid I speak about, which is stick to the basics, which is meat exercise, meat sleep, meat nutrition, everything else is, I call them accessory items. Mm. But what we see is this, um, so many people going out, getting the supplements, they're getting their methylated B vitamins and they're getting their creatine, which I do um, advocate for, which we have to get into. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing, they're doing the ice baths as cold as they can get and they're doing everything else, yeah. but they're not meeting their sleep requirements. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, but that's not sexy. It's like, hey, just sleep well. Yeah. That's not yeah, sexy. That's not exciting at all.